Welcome everybody, it's your boy, the Versace Stoner, with another episode of the SW. This one's a big chew. That's right, folks. Big news flash. Oh my god! One of the greatest in this game, and one of my favorite all-time people in this game. The Versace Stunner! It's a place like this. I started in a mill, I'm here still in a mill. I consider myself a mill wrestler. Welcome, everybody. It's your boy, the Versace Stunner. We have a very special episode of VSW Podcast. We have a very special guest. Wrestling Openweight Champion, Sunset, Steven Garcia. What's up, man? How's it going, brother? How are you doing? Thank you for coming on the show. No, definitely, man. Thank you for having me. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I see you are wearing the belt already. You got it with you. Beautiful piece, I might yeah, say. I mean, I love I love belts. You know, I've always been into them ever since a kid. You know, ever since seeing that that gold eagle around Hogan, like, you know, when it first got debuted, I was like, wow. You know, I started to appreciate belts over the years. And, you know, getting into the indie scene, it's a whole new game because I feel like there's so much intricacy in a lot of these, like, titles that – you don't see, you know, the, the what's on TV now is very basic compared to what's on the indie scene. No, nah, that's for sure. But, um, you know, that is a beautiful, beautiful belt. And congratulations on your victory. You know, I saw some um, clips here and there, and I saw some stuff online. Just, you know, great match overall. And we'll get into that matchup, and we'll talk about all that. But we're going to go back a little bit in time, talk about the beginnings of your career. Oh, cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um... Well, my very first match was at Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling versus Flad. I don't know if you ever heard of Vladimir Joseph, but he was my very first opponent. Man, weighed about 400 pounds at the time. So, you know, clearly I came up short. But, um, yeah, that was my very first ever match. That was back in 2021. I still remember February 13th, 2021 was the day I already stepped foot in the pro wrestling ring. Now, um, prior prior to that, were you um you were you in a wrestling school? Were you privately trained? Yeah, yeah, of course. I was trained by Paul Roma and Mario Mancini out at Paradise Alley Training Facility in East Haven, Connecticut. Wow, what a do! I mean, talk about two people in the business. It's like I mean, I grew up with watching Paul Roma a lot in the tag team, you know, division, and you know, it's just someone that I always just you know used to watch. And same thing with Mancini. You know, both just you know stable. And very, um, you know, there's, there's great names to have in your corner to teach you. Um, that must have been kind of an honor to have legends. Oh, no, yeah. That is definitely an honor for me. That um, definitely is something that I take take with courage a lot. Because, you know, we have WWF legend, Four Horsemen, Paul Roma, as well as WWE legend, um, Mario Mancini. So, and to me, to be under their learning tree, and learn everything about them and stuff and pick their brains at everything that I do is definitely an honor. And I mean, that's no dig to like, you know, any other school because every school has, you know, somebody that can teach. It's just that, you know, when you do get these, you know, WWE legends and WWF legends and you get all these former, um, you know, superstars that, that have gone further, you know, that have been on the TV, that have been under Vince McMahon, that have been on this. You know, it is a little bit different of a learning curve of what they can teach and how far they can maybe, you know, show you where to get to if you wanted to go that far in the industry. No, that is true. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, like, there's a whole bunch of schools out here that are good, man. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter sometimes if you went to WWE or came from that era. It, you know, everybody, there's a lot of good schools out there, you know. Especially in Connecticut, you know, there's a lot of good schools. There's a lot of good schools in, in the New England area in, in general, like Massachusetts, New Jersey, all those areas and stuff. Like, there's very good schools. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're very lucky in this whole area from, like, pretty much New Jersey to Maine that, you know, a lot of superstars have been very well trained and a lot of 
have them gone to that next level. I mean, we've had, you know, people coming from, you know, New England Pro Wrestling Academy, you know, Sasha Banks and all that. Um, you know, you have people coming in out of Maine, out of the dojo. You got people coming all over the place. Um, you know, Creative Pro up in New York. Um, you know, you got people coming out of Connecticut. So it, it's a very vast area, but it's also just very rich in wrestlers. Good wrestlers. <laughs> no, yeah, man. There's very good wrestlers on your knees. And, you know, you're right in the midst of it. You're right in the mix of, you know, that competition that's out there right now in New England. And there's a lot. There's tons. There's tons of great names out there. You know, you got like Alex. Yeah, there's Tyson, tons of great names. Shannon Thomas, you got bunches of people just running rampant right now on the scene, and then you got you too. You're a champion. Yeah, I think you know. Thankfully, hard work pays off. You know. Um. Well, so you broke in in 21, though. You know, and you were saying you worked. Um, it was the um, Alley Pro. Yeah, Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. That's Paradise the Alley Pro. I'm from. And, um, you know, so you worked there for a while. Was that like, your, you know, your home? Were you just doing that one promotion for a while? Or did you just like just explode and go everywhere? No, that's my home base. You know, as soon as I got the green light, you know, from home, I, re I respected the fact of home and your trainer. I waited for my release. I did not wait to, you know, I did not sit here and just thought I was already there. No, you know, I waited till my trainers and my coaches said, you know, you're ready to go out there. And that's exactly what I did. When they gave me the green light, I grew my wings and spread. Yeah, I mean, that's honestly, I think, kind of the way to do it. Um, you know, I know I have some people do it the other way, and they'll kind of be like, in their head, they're ready, or in their head, they think they're better than they are. And, you know, maybe you are, but you got to remember, where when you go to these schools or when you're wrestling, these guys have seen a lot of people come and go. And they kind of know, you know, when people are ready and really aren't ready. Um, and it's better to be ready and take that extra time to be ready than to go out unready, hurt yourself, hurt somebody else. You know, God forbid, it's even worse than hurt. You know, things can happen in the ring, even with very well-trained professionals. Never mind, you know, people that just aren't ready. So I do no, appreciate exactly. That. So, you know, exactly. Yeah. So if, if pro wrestlers will get hurt, like guys that have been doing it for 15, 20 years, will still get hurt in that ring, you know, imagine someone that's just, just starting out, you know. So, like, it's, it's scary to kind of think of, um, you know, it gets somewhat of a hot topic sometimes about, you know, how far people are trained and, you know, because on the indie scene, it can be kind of, you know, difficult to kind of do, you know, research on every single person, you know, where they came from and, you know, how far did they get in trained? Yes, okay, I'm trained by, you know, such and such, and that's great, but, oh, they only went, you know, three weeks and, and they only showed up one of those three weeks. And it's like, Sometimes you have that. And it's like you got to do a little bit more research, but it, it, it's good to see, you know, like I said, and I really, I don't, you know, it's, I don't knock anybody, but it's just, I really like seeing, um, you know, people that do come from schools or well trained, you know, professional errors. And, you know, because you see a difference in, you know, the way they act uh, in ring, out ring, just in general. And it's better for the whole industry. It gives a better um, look, um, for instance, you know, because sometimes I feel like the independent scene gets shat on. It, it People think of, you know, very low tier, um, almost in a carnival when you think of independent wrestling. It's not that. It's honestly, at its very best, it's better than some of the WWE shows that are out there. Um, you know, a lot of the times it's right under there. You got, you know, two very high top, you know, promotions in this area, Beyond and Limitless. And they're both at the very top, right under probably WWE as far as, you know, views, great matchups and everything else that happens in wrestling. So, you know, to see people come in and see people take it, you know, real serious, even at the whatever level it might be, it shines great light on the whole industry. No, yeah, man. That's basically what I like to bring out of myself. You know, I like to show seriousness. I like to show belief in this a lot because this is what I do. This is my career. Um, This is the future that I want. So, you know, why take it like it's just a grain of salt? Like, no, I have to take it like it's all I have, you know? And I have to treat it like I know I have and respect that ring because <laughs> you're risking your life every time you step foot in between those ropes. So, you know, like I always try to tell everybody and, you know, I'm still in the learning tree myself. Like I've, I've only I haven't been in this in, in this industry for that long. So, you know, I I stay quiet majority of the time because I have no business either, you know, telling that other individual or, or this other person what they should or should not be doing, you know, I'm still learning myself. So, Do you, you, know? Just, you know, you're going into locker rooms with the ears open. 
eyes open, maybe the mouth shut a little bit, and just kind of, you know, learn from the veterans and just kind of soak it all in. Because like you said, I mean, you're still in it. And I don't think, you know, pro wrestling is almost like anything, whether it be music, art, whatever it kind of is, you never stop learning. Um, there's always something you can improve on. There's always something you can get a little bit better on. So the more info you take in, like in any other field, you know, the better you're going to be at something. Exactly. You know, it's just all about taking in the right advice and listening to the right people and just making sure that, you know, you don't let you feel, you don't let your head get filled up too much, you know, because every single time you step foot in there, you're going to learn something new. So, you know, you're never going to be as, you're always going to be better than you were yesterday. So, you know, you got to take that into consideration and not think that you're going to be better and, you know, in the future, you don't know what the future holds for you, you know, so you're better off just being quiet, ears open, eyes open, mouth shut, learn, learn your craft, master it the best that you can and try to be the best you can be. So being humble will really get you further in this more than just, you know, kind of going out there cocky, you know, Shawn Michaels, 93, 94 kind of attitude. You got to, I mean, honestly, all joking aside, it's better just to come in, you know, always as that new person and kind of just look around and be like, hey, what can I learn today? Yeah, believe it or not, you have to be like that outside, like in the real world as well, like in your own personal life. You know, the more humble you are, you know, the more respect you're going to get your way. You know, don't humble yourself to that very point where, you know, you get taken advantage of either. You know, I'm not saying do that, but, you know, humble yourself. Learn when to defend yourself, when not to defend yourself. Learn how to speak out on a situation that you need to speak out on. You know, even well, if you are two years in, three years in the situation, just, you know, just know how to put your words together and understand the level that you're in. If you're in level one, you're in level one. You know, if you're in level two, you're in level two and understand that. You know, I'm like, you know, I definitely can understand that. And I get that. And even like, you know, I said, transcribing to real world, because, you know, sometimes it is, you know, as, as much as people's egos get in the way, sometimes, you know, you, you got to think about this from this point of view to be humble, you know, it's to kind of show a little bit of weakness. Yes. But it's also showing you that, you know, you're like the next man. So if you want people to connect with you, you can't just, you know, always show this one side. you got to almost show a little bit of vulnerability. This way, you know, it does get, whether it is fans, whether it is whatever, to kind of connect to that side because that is the human side. That's the kind of side they're going to kind of grasp at, um, you know. And being humble does work in that instance. And, you know, like you said, you don't want to get to the point where, you know, you're getting stomped on and stepped on and walked over. But, you know, going into any situation, just know, you know, you're not perfect. And I do, and I can see that, you know, and agree with that a lot. Um, so now, you know, you were doing that, you know, you got the okay. You're moving on in the wrestling world. I've seen, you know, I've seen you post things. You started working math shows, started getting out there. Um, Ring Gladiators, I've seen you at. Um, there's been a few. How's that been? Working around oh, New England. It's been great, especially with NRG and um and WWE right now. Is is going great, man. NRG, great locker room, great feel to it. You know, Coliseum Pro Wrestling as well. You know, like that locker room and that feel, being in there working with them, man. It's it's a great feel just being out there with all these promotions. You know, working out and wrestling with every single person in that locker room. You know, it's it's an, it's an awesome feeling. It feels it feels great just being a part of the industry and being welcomed in a locker room. And, you know, getting your hands shaked and you shaking people's hands right back, like, that's all an honor to me. Like, I really, really enjoy that a lot. And to be able to build a bond with each and every locker room that I step foot in, it's, that's honestly, that's, that's a very good honor to me. You know, and you're, I'm going to say it again, you kind of got an upper hand there with the, in the NWWE there. You know, they're, 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 you know, one of these promotions that are just known, you know, for always grabbing some great, historical talent whether it be you know like a bushwhacker whether it be somebody you know relevant you know from back in the day that can come in they always grab these great names and you know we always you know we'll go up there and try to see you know even from math if we can get up there but um you know it's one of those shows where they do so you're always getting these kind of you know veterans on the show that can teach you something you know yeah man that is definitely true like they have definitely brought in some guys you know like you know sergeant slaughter rikishi Jimmy Hart, you know, they have brought in some good Hall of Famer names. Um, um, they also had brought in Rhino, Jay Lito, you know, they've, you know, they've done good. And I, I really can feel honored to be a part of that roster. 
Yeah, I mean, speaking of humble, I heard um, Jimmy Hart is probably one of the most humble. Like, he actually will, like, you know, still to this day, being a legend, he still helps, you know, set up chairs, take chairs down, you know, whatever he can do at a show. He, you know, doesn't act no better than the next man. And that is true, yeah, because I, I was at a Northeast Wrestling show with Jimmy Hart one time, and um, he was the most nicest dude, man. He was talking, he spoke in the locker room, he gave me great advice. You know, and I was seeing him folding a chair. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, grab a chair. I'm like, thank you. But, I, you know, you should be relaxing right now. Don't need to be doing that. You know, but that was good old Jimmy Hart. He probably you know, but you got to appreciate but, that. Though. I mean, because some people will be like, they won't even like, you know, uh, some of them will leave before the show. <laughs> if they think they're that good, yeah. they'll, like, they'll be like, I want first match and then they're out. And you're like, oh, where's no, this yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. That's how it is. Sometimes you just got to let them be. Like, they want to be that person. Hey, so be it. You know, your future will speak for itself, you know? It is. So, it is. Um, you know, but, um, you know, I've always had great interactions where, you know, with the people that I have met, you know, over the years, whether it be, you know, in Maine, whether it be in Jersey, whether it be in Connecticut, wherever it may be. And I try to cover that area. It's a kind of a long area. So sometimes I have to just, like, pick one or two promotions for a little bit. And then kind of move along to another few. And it's hard playing catch up for like, there's so many promotions now in New England. It's just wild. Um, it's just a great time to be a wrestling fan. Great time to be a podcaster. Great time to be a wrestler. A lot of opportunity. A lot of shows, like I said, opportunity. Big opportunity shows. You got like wrestling open now happening every week. Um, you know, that's, yeah, a that's, great another place, um, that's another place that, you know, I have my eye on. I'm definitely looking forward to one day being able to be a part of that roster as well work at. It is. It really is, you know. Like I said in the beginning of the episode, you know, beyond um and limitless, you know, just kind of ring top bells in me, you know, just because of who they've had on the roster, you know, MJF as champion. You've seen, you know, almost anybody right now that's really relevant, you've seen come in and gone and beyond and both are just two top and you can get a lot, a lot of views, you know, through IWTV. Great, you know, great, I would say platform for now for indie wrestlers because you know before you know it used to be you know you get your show you have your matches you know you get your fans that come you get your family that come they get you know their hard cam footage then you know you got you know the show footage but there was no place for fans to, to watch it maybe youtube maybe facebook if it got to it but now you got iwtv which is you know has a wicked huge library of all these independent shows and then you know, you get all these live events happening, too, which is great as well. Now I see, you know, from them, some other networks have come out as well. Um, and that's, you know, great because, you know, the more net for me, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the kind of person, you know, network person. You give me something that I can just watch a bunch of my favorite things on, I'm sold. Um, so, you know, that's how I get, you know, that's how I watch my wrestling. If I can't get to it, I'll watch it, you know, through these things or through the computer. But before, you know, you'd have to go through Facebook, try to go through a page, try to find an individual match. Um, so much better now, so much easier for fans. And even for wrestlers, just to kind of showcase it. You're like, hey, you can watch episode such and such. Here's the link. Um, you know, and just give links rather than having to send these big files of, you know, home video matches. No, yeah, de definitely. That's IWTV is actually one of the best platforms right now for indie wrestling. That's uh, in a place of an exposure that I'm definitely trying to work my way up to down the road. And, um, and hopefully I will be seen one day under IWTV cameras. That will be great. So what, um, what is on the agenda? What shows you got coming up in your future? Well, right now I actually have, we got October 13th. We have um, Coliseum Pro Wrestling Nightmare on Elm Street. That's definitely one of the shows that will be coming up as well. We have October 7th, which is Paradise Alley as well. I will actually be facing Bloodstall for the um, IC Championship on that on that show. And then we have October 18th. I will be back at New World Wrestling Extreme. I will be defending the Openweight Championship. The show will be Stranger Things. And then we'll be following right back with that on November 18th. And November 11th um, will be United by One. Um, that will be a kind of like an all promotions getting together type show. So at United by One, I will also be be there. You know, um, that show will be coming up. It's like a charity show for all type one diabetes and um, all types of diseases that done people have um 
gone through, especially um, diabetes. So that's mainly the main cause for that event. And then that will be followed by November 18th. We'll be going back to New World as I'll be defending the Open Weight Championship. Um, and then December will come as well as I'll be back at New World again to defend the Overweight title. So those are the upcoming dates that I got so far. So make sure none of you guys miss out on any of those dates, especially October 13th. That's that's the one right now that you guys is the one that's coming up close. And then don't forget October 28th as I defend the Overweight title for the second time. That is great. Very busy schedule and a fighting defending champion. You know, always just something, you know, worth seeing and you know it's good to see that you're very active and like you said you know um striving to get even even further into the industry and make it you know and take up more um promotions and more bigger platforms and really get more eyes and ears on you and that's just wonderful um you know see just see wrestlers strive like that because you know that's what i like about that scene too you know and i was talking to my friend the other day but you know we go to these shows and i'm like watch this one watch this one watch this one and wait a year and I can guarantee you, at some point between now and that year, you're going to see them on TV. Oh, yeah. And that's just how New England um, works. You know, one day they're in the VFW, and the next day they're on, you know, TV. And it's just that fast, too. Um, you know, the the way that people come out of, um, you know, New England, like I said, is just very, um, you know, it's fighting. It, it's just, like I said, you just it's just very lucky. Um, not even lucky. We just... It's bred for wrestling. Um, it just always has been. I feel you know with WWE being headquartered in Connecticut, a lot of wrestling has been geared towards the East Coast. Yes, West Coast has great wrestling. Midwest has great wrestling. So doesn't the South too? But I just feel like New England has always just been this great hot spot for it. And um, yeah, it even, is. it's even is bigger now. It's just you know right now we're getting. It seems that even like I said, more and more promotions are starting up. Some older promotions are coming back even. Um the promotions that are out there are getting larger. They're getting bigger, you know, on bigger platforms too. And they're getting, you know, more views and, you know, you're getting all these um, fans kind of united. Like you said, more on um, collab shows, you know, you get that um, restival at the end of the year all the time. And you just mentioned another collab show kind of, <clears throat> was it in Connecticut? Yeah. United by one will be at Hamden, November 11th. Hamden. You know, and that's when you get even more, you get a bunch of promotions together. And so you get all, these fans from all these different promotions coming together and then you get all them you know making friends with each other and then everybody's kind of checking out each other's shows and everybody ends up going to these shows <clears throat> and fan bases just keep doubling tripling quadrupling it, it's great to see it's, it's great to watch promotions grow it's great to see wrestlers grow it's great to see wrestlers fan bases grow um it's just a great thing um you know that's one of the reasons why i started this podcast was just honestly for people to come on talk and get eyes and ears on them. That's it. Um, and that's all I've been doing with it. You know, it's just for people to come in, tell them, you know, you want to, you're a pro wrestler, you're, you like to wrestle, this is where I wrestle, this is why I wrestle, and so forth. And, um, you know, and just get more eyes, ears on them, get fans on them, you know, just hear that side of them. Sometimes they don't get a voice. Sometimes they don't get to say that in the ring. Sometimes they don't get to say that, you know, in a promo. And, yeah, and sometimes, yeah. you know, not, and not for nothing, not all the time do people want to do interviews with, with indie guys. Sometimes, you know, everybody's thinking, you know, the big names of the higher end guys. And it's just like, well, there's a whole other roster that you don't even know about of great wrestlers. And No, um, yeah, they, they have to sometimes understand those big names that they want to interview now were once local indie wrestlers, you know. So, like, especially at least majority of them, you know. So, like, sometimes you got to remember that in um, certain people. Like, that local indie wrestler that you're interviewing now can be signed tomorrow, you know? So, like, always keep that in mind, you know? I try to respect every single individual that is in the industry, so <clears throat> no matter what their status is. Now, let me ask you, was wrestling something that you always enjoyed? Like, did you grow up as a kid watching it? Yeah, I've, since I was five years old, I've, I've watched ECW, WCW, TNA, especially Impact. That was more my era. You know, TNA Impact when they came out back in 05, 06. You know, I was yeah. only like eight, nine years old. So, you know, that was more my era. Um, So, yeah, I definitely did. I loved it. You know, my grandfather loved it. They were all fans. I just happened to be the first one to take it as a career in my family. So, you know, like, it's always been embedded with me, you know, especially because my uncle is special needs. And that's something that enjoyed him a lot. So me and him bonded a lot with that as well. My little brother, he loves it. You know, he's like, so he studies it like 
Like if it was his, like if it was all he knew how to do, um, he wants to so bad to, you know, he wants to do this so bad as well. But you know, he's had trouble as a kid growing up. You know, he hasn't really been, um, in the best of shape. So you know, it would be pretty hard for him. But I don't doubt him. I'm pretty sure that he will definitely, you know, one day get to live his dream, man. You know, hopefully it'll yeah, be you know, I mean, better than one day. You never can say never in this. I've seen, you know, if you want it, you can get it. And, and it doesn't even have to be in ring. You know, there's so many opportunities in the industry just to be part of it that, you know, there's, there's something in it almost for everyone if you really want it and you work at it. And, you know, like you said, I mean, I don't know the situation. I won't get into those details. But like I said, I'm sure, you know, like you said, like you said, you can overcome it, whatever it is, and get there. Um. And that's great to see that, you know, your family supports it. And I'm, I'm guessing they come on and watch you. Yeah, they've been on. They've been they've, they've been to a couple shows, you know, especially the ones that they can make it to. You know, um, I appreciate the little bit of support. Like, I, I understand, you know, some, some family members work. Some family members are busy. Some family members have kids and busy lives with themselves. You know, they can't attend every single show. But, you know, it really means a lot when they actually do take time off the schedule to come and actually watch and perform, knowing that they – barely ever do you know so like when they do is it means that much more you know sometimes when every when that person's constantly there constantly there it's more like oh dude take a break you know but when you haven't seen them in so long and you know that oh my god you know they still thought of you you know they still remembered you and come and see you it just means that much more um uh, maybe that's just me i don't know but you know that's great um though you know um no, and i definitely you know and it's good <clears throat> i said it's great, you know, how it kind of does bring people together, um, families, et cetera. Uh, wrestling is just one of those things that just kind of does that, you know. I have a five-year-old. He loves to go to shows, you know, and I bring him when I can bring him. Sometimes I have to – I gotta. I haven't brought him to um, too many shows yet. It has to be, like, kind of, like, quieter shows because he gets a little wild. He'll start putting me in headlocks and stuff and trying to take me out. <laughs> yeah, um, but – um. You know, we watch it on TV. You know, he likes, he likes, believe it or not, he'll, he'll tell me, I'm like, what's your favorite? He's like, WWF. He likes, like, um, big boss man, like, older school guys. And, he'll, you know, he, we watch it on Peacock Network and, you know, watch all the older shows. Um, But then that brings me to my next question. Growing up, was there any, like, um, you know, guys that you kind of looked at and said, you know, I want to be like this guy in the ring. I want to be, you know, work like that. This is somebody that I could, you know, kind of relate to. Um, of course, you know, I've, I've always been a Jeff Hardy fan since I was a kid, you know, that's, that's mainly been the main guy that always got to me, not necessarily his in-ring work and how he does, which that is too, but more of his character and his background and his lifestyle, you know, the way he came up, you know, so yeah, and I, me as a kid knowing that was pretty surreal at that time, so, you know, I really related with him a lot, so he was one of my favorites growing up, but now that I'm older and I'm actually in the business and I go back in time and I actually realize how good of a of the technical wrestlers were, you know, like, for example, like Scotty Tuhati, for example, like now, now that I think about it, you know, going back in time and realizing how good he really was in the ring, you know, kind of speaks different about my favorite wrestlers that were when I was a kid now, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, definitely. You know, if you if you had to ask me when I was five or seven or eight, you know, who was your favorite wrestler? You know, you know, for me it would probably be Hulk Hogan. You know, he was the loudest. He was the biggest. Ultimate Warrior. You know, these guys were great, but wrestling wise, not. Nah, now nah, you go back and you're like, well, no character work. I'd have to say my favorite would be Randy Savage, and you know, in ring, probably you know, you know, whoever it is, and you know, it's just it is a different experience once you get seen. You go, oh, well. Oh, technical wrestling, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. They, you know, they might not have been that main event, you know, growing up and getting the headline, but, oh, that was a hell of a match. And you start looking at matches differently. You start watching wrestling differently. Um, you know, some of it even gets ruined a little bit because you, you can kind of anticipate the spots and you know something's coming, but... Yeah, exactly. You know, you know like, guys like Sean and Benjamin and stuff like that. You know, you never, as a kid growing up, even guys like Edge, when you were a kid and you hated his guts and you didn't realize how good he really got you into the program now that you're older, it's like, damn. You know, I really didn't appreciate him as much when I was a kid. I should have definitely appreciated it more. He should have been more of my favorite back then than it is now. You know what I'm saying? Kind of yeah. like that. And I mean, it's funny for me, you know, I said like, oh, Hogan, probably my favorite, but, you know, 
that was only to a certain extent. And then after that, for some reason, I just always have just been a fan of heels. And I just would always just, you know, no matter what, even if I knew they would lose, you know, I would just root for that heel. You know, everybody, yeah, was, right, everybody right. was rooting. Everybody was rooting for Austin. I was still rooting for DX and Sean. I knew he wasn't going to win it because, you know, the momentum was just showing, you know, that, you know, Austin was next to be champion and, me, I just still was stuck on the heels, and I'm still like that in the indie scene. I really just, you know, I really just ex- enjoy the heels. And, you know, I think I just, it's because I appreciate it to an extent. You know, it, it's great being a face, obviously, and it takes work to be that face because, you know, you have to get fans to like you. You have to get them behind you. You have to become that person that they're going to cheer for. That is a lot of work, yeah. and it takes a lot. But, you know, and, and to be hated, you know, it, it's not that hard. You can just, you know, say some, you know, snotty one-liners or make fun of their favorite sports team or, you know, say Red Sox mm-hmm. suck and Boston's going to hate you. But Yeah, all of a sudden you're getting booed out. <laughs> but the thing I really respect about it is no matter what that is, they still do it. And they still do it every single time. And no matter how bad it gets, they continue it. And they just go in there with the same attitude. And they it doesn't change their wrestling. They're able to work with all that negative hate. And they're able to turn it for themselves into positivity. Because for them, they're doing a good job if you're booing, you're screaming, you're swearing at them, whatever it is. You know, to a certain extent, obviously, nobody wants, you know, stuff thrown at them and to get hurt. But if you can get that reaction from a crowd that they really hate you inside, you know, you're doing a good job. So you're turning that negativity into something positive. No, yeah, and that's definitely what everything should be like, you know, negativity turned into positivity, you know, like, um, but yeah, man, like, all that, all that feel, man, being a baby face and heel and all that stuff, man, but being that face is definitely, like, very hard, like, to this day, I'm still struggling, you know, like, trying to really prove to the crowd and to the fans like hey this is who I am you know what I mean like this is me like you know I'm, I know somewhere deep down in there and I, I know you guys you know are are feeling me you know like understanding me you know you, I hope one day you guys are by my side 100 percent you know I'm still just starting out so you know they're still you know still feeling me. That's great, you know, and I and I really, like I said, I really can't wait to just see all that you have. You know, you're, like you said, you have a busy schedule this year coming up, and it's going to be a lot of matches, and it's just going to be a lot of fun, though, because, you know, you are making waves, and you are holding a title, and with that comes a lot of, you know, responsibility, but it comes a lot of great matches. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, sometimes it's like Spider-Man, man, with great power comes great responsibility, so, you know, you have to definitely take that into consideration and use that responsibility wisely. You know, be smart with it because when you have a title, you have trust under your belt. And that right there, you should take it with pride and courage. Very good. And I just got uh, two more questions. One is, um, why um, why do they call you Sunset? Where did you get that name from? It's funny you say. Everyone always asks me this. It's because when I started training out, um, I was always going to the facility. And all I've ever, all, all I did the most was Sunset Flips. And it really started out as a tease, and people started just calling me, you know, I'm just calling you Sunset, because that's all you really just do when you come in here. So um, eventually it, stuck, it stood with me. You know, I did debut as Compost, but which I really hated that name. And everybody kept telling me, you should have just went with Sunset Steve, man. You do those Sunset flips so beautifully. You should definitely make that into your arsenal. Make that, That's who you are. You know what I mean? Like, you flipped over the Sunset, and now this is who you are. Like your sunset, Steve. Like, because I did have a troubled past, you know. Before pro wrestling, I was, I was definitely in a in a very bad place, you know. And um, basically, pro wrestling saved my life. So you know, so ever since I started doing sunset flips a lot when I started training, um, it w- it was funny because Flash Waller, you know, Dustin Flash Waller was actually the one that started calling me that out, you know, as a joke, and it just stood with it ever since. That's great, though, and it's good to hear that, you know, well, that pro wrestling kind of, you know, helps find and ground you, and, you know, you do hear that a lot, you know, people with trouble past and have issues that have found pro wrestling to be a great, um, not even just, you know, vice, but more of a safe haven and a place to grow, learn in a healthy, positive way that doesn't involve, you know, all the stuff that, you know, you're, you're trying to get rid of, and, um, you know, you do hear that a lot. It's such a, um, it can be such a positive and helpful environment for so many people. Yes, for sure, man. Definitely. 
you know, when I was on, <clears throat> when I was younger, I tried to get into it. And for me in my era, it was just, you know, it was, um, I was just too small. I'm five, eight. And they were like, no, when, you're not going to make it anywhere five, eight. And, you know, it was a time right before, you know, 2001, 2002, Kill Kowalski just looked at me and was like, no, um, you're too short guy. Um, you know, because I went out to the school in Mald and I wanted to get into it too. And, you know, at the time there was nobody that height. Nowadays it's different. You know, it's more, it's more universal. It's not this world of big men. But I, you know, like that, you know, I went into a, another kind of sport. I went into boxing, amateur boxing. And, and, you know, just that physical training, not even the the competing, not even the fighting, not even like even the wrestling, whatever it is, just the physical training can be just, you know, such a stress relief, such a way to just ground yourself, such a way to just play your head from the daily that shit. Oh, well, yeah, it definitely is. You get step in between those roads, you forget about everything. All you all you know about is what you're about to do in there. That's that's pretty much it. The moment you roll out, you're back to reality. It's great though. Um, and the last question I have for you is this Tom um, simple one. I'm just where can folks find you? How can they find you on social media so they can follow your schedule and you know Check out all your cool videos and stuff like that. Hey, man, you can always find me on Facebook under Steven Garcia. Or you can find me on Instagram under Sunset Steve G. Or you can find me on Twitter X, now that they call it, under um, Garcia Sunset G. Um, you can also find me on YouTube under Steven Gar under Sunset Steven Garcia. And you can find me on Fight TV under Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling and XWA. You can check some of my old stuff as well. And you can um, catch me on Tropson's, on Tropson's television network as well. Um, I'm down on all those platforms. Follow me, man. Everybody, all you guys, follow me. Please show me some love, support. Hey, man, we're trying to get out here. A young, young man from New Haven. So let's get this going. Well, thank you very much. And I hope this does help and get eyes and ears on you because, you know, you're doing wonderful things in the ring and we love to see it. Thank you very much for coming on my show. Have yourself hey, a brother. great night. Hey, my brother. Thank you, my brother. All right. I appreciate you having me. Hopefully we can work some more again down the road. We definitely will. You know, we love to circle back with people, you know, a couple of months out, six months out, and kind of see where they're at, you know, especially the champions. See if they're still holding that gold. And I, you know, I have a feeling you might still be holding that gold. And I hope I'm right. Have yourself a great night. You too, my brother. Thank you, bro. Bye-bye. What a great episode, folks. I have to say, you know, I have to say, we have to watch this kid. He is going places. He's going to be making waves in this industry. You know, it's lovely to see, you know, just somebody so young in the industry making, already, you know, holding a title. Great to see it. And as always, you know, folks, just, you know, follow these guys. Check them out. If you can locally, go to their shows. You know, it's always worth the time um, to get out there and see these guys. So like I said, they're the next people that will be on TV, that will be you know, on AEW, WWE, and all these other promotions that you might think, you know, the major leagues. Check it all out, and as always, support indie wrestling. Versace Stoner out.